Now we've learned all about all the chemistry that aldehydes and ketones can undergo. And the final piece that we need to consider is just how to make aldehydes and ketones from other functionality. So a lot of this we've already covered. Um, so most of this will be review. Um, but one of the uh, most straightforward ways to make these functionalities is through oxidation. And that's something that we talked about in the alcohol section. So you remember that for the uh, synthesis of an aldehyde, you can simply oxidize a primary alcohol with PCC as long as you have a solvent that doesn't involve water. So for example, we could oxidize butanol to butanol. Okay, so that's a very straightforward way to make aldehydes. Um, and then of course, if we have a secondary alcohol, um, for example, well, we could just do isopropanol. We can also do the exact same conditions and get to a ketone. Okay, so that's, that's simply review and, and it's very straightforward. <clears throat> There's another thing that we can do um, to get to aldehydes and ketones, um, which is to oxidize alkenes. And you might have learned about this uh, last semester when you uh, learned about alkenes, um, but if you didn't, um, this will be pretty straightforward, I think. So. ozone analysis, right? So what we're doing here is we're treating alkenes with ozone, uh, just like we see in, in the atmosphere. It's O3, <clears throat> which actually has the structure of a, of a three-membered ring with three oxygens in it, okay? And what happens is you treat uh, pretty much any alkene. Um, it doesn't matter if it's monosubstituted, disubstituted, trisubstituted, or tetrasubstituted. Um, they pretty much all react. Um, if you treat it with, with ozone, O3, and then follow it up with a reductive workup, and, and we're just going to consider dimethyl sulfide. Um, what you'll do is you'll basically just cleave that alkene right in half, and each piece will become a carbonyl. So you uh, you get two two different carbonyls whenever you cleave an alkene. Okay, so that's actually a really useful reaction. Um, uh, it, it basically, ozone is so reactive that it basically reacts with any alkene, um, so it's very general. So uh, to quickly show how this works um, in terms of the mechanism. So we have an alkene, and then uh, we're going to treat this with, with ozone. So what ozone will do is it, it exists in this, in this uh, three-membered um, uh, ring form. Uh, but what this will do is to open up into a, sort of a linear form um, where you've, you've now got um, a situation where there's a, a sort of a 1-3 dipole. So this is the formal charge that we have to draw for this thing. Um, but if we actually thought of it, this is sort of like an L system again, right? So we can kind of think of this as being negatively charged on one end and, and positively charged on the other. Uh, even though we're drawing the, the formal positive charge here, it really act, reacts as if it's got negative one on one end and positive on the other. <clears throat> and of course, you can draw an alternative resonance form, which actually just switches those two. Um, but anyway, this basically undergoes a cycloaddition with um, the, the alkene. So I'll just use that, that there. Okay. And so basically, what we're going to do is to, um, if you want to push arrows, we can, we can push them around like this. And the initial product of an ozonolysis is this species, right? So the O3 just basically uh, did a cycle addition onto the alkene. Um, this is something that's called a mol ozonide. Mol ozonide. And that's actually not stable, though. That's way too many oxygens that are bonded to each other. So this actually undergoes, um, it, it basically breaks apart and recombines, and we don't need to talk about uh, that process, but basically this is going to rearrange itself so that we get to uh, this situation. Okay, so if we, if we put the R groups on R1, R2,
basically we get to, to this situation where um, at least I mean, we still have one oxygen oxygen bond, but we at least don't have three in a row. And this is what's actually called the ozonide. Ozonide, okay? Um, and this will actually just sit around. Um, it's actually a little bit unstable and explosive. <laughs> so you, you keep this at low temperature. Um, but then, then once you're done with the ozonolysis, you basically just treat this with dimethyl sulfide. And uh, this basically does a, a reductive cleavage, uh, which, which breaks that bond there. And then if you can see that each of these carbons um, is basically part of an acetal, okay, yeah, essentially. And so as soon as you break that bond, you basically are going to um, do a, a reverse mechanism where you, where you collapse out um, that intermediate. And so that's how you get to each of the carbonyls, okay. So, all right, I, I showed this so that you understand how an ozonolysis works. We're actually not going to uh, deal with this mechanism, so you don't have to be concerned about uh, memorizing this, this part of it, um, but it's there if you want to understand it. Okay, so that's actually really useful then um, as, a, as a synthetic uh, tool because, as I said, you can, you can get to aldehydes or ketones um, depending on depending on the alkene that you're going to use. So if you have a terminal alkene, that's obviously going to go to an aldehyde, and then the other product is going to be formaldehyde. Okay. If you have a uh, alkene like this, right? so it's still terminal, but it's 1,1 disubstituted, that's going to ozonalize to a ketone and formaldehyde. If you have a disubstituted alkene, and it can be cis or trans, it doesn't matter, and you ozonalize, that gives you two aldehydes. If you have a trisubstituted, and you ozonalize, you get to one ketone and one aldehyde. And then if you have a tetrasubstituted alkene, uh, obviously this is going to give two ketones. Okay, so all of those products are possible. They're, they're very straightforward to do. Um, and you know, you can also imagine that the alkene is, uh, can be part of a ring. So if you split that, you're going to split apart into one molecule that has two different carbonyls. So it turns out to be an incredibly useful reaction. Okay, so ozonolysis. Um, may or may not be a new reaction for you. So we've got oxidation, ozonolysis. Um, remember that we can also uh, get to carbonyls by reduction. So um, in the case of, for example, an, an ester, let's say, if you treat this with um, either dibol or lithium aluminum hydride, uh, you can basically um, convert that into the primary alcohol, and then that's just simply going to be a, a PCC oxidation uh, away from the aldehyde. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> now there's another one um, that we mentioned in the, um, the cyanohydrin video, and that is if we have a nitrile, any nitrile, we can actually treat this with dibol, treat it with dibol, um, and then we're going to do an acidic workup with water. So a um, aqueous workup, and then this actually goes to give the aldehyde. So so this this nitrile is at the same oxidation state as the ester, but it doesn't go down to the alcohol. It actually goes to the aldehyde. So so why is that? So let's just talk about that very quickly. What happens in the case of the nitrile reduction? All right. So we're going to formally add um, a hydride equivalent. Okay. So um, you're going to have Depending on the reagent, you're going to have aluminum or, or lithium coordinated to the to the nitrogen um, Activating it so the hydride would add to the carbon and will push the electrons up onto the nitrogen. Okay, and that's going to give an intermediate That looks like this so aluminum or whatever on the nitrogen um, and so we've got this situation, but <clears throat> in with this nitrogen metal bond, this is basically um, as if this was uh, uh, an N minus. So it, it sort of feels like it's N minus, okay? And you know that nitrogen is really, really, uh, sorry, uh, 
is, is not very acidic. So if you have N minus, that's a very strong base. And what that means is that trying to add another hydride to, to that thing is, is very, very difficult. So that's, that's not going to happen um, with dibol. Dibol isn't strong enough to do that second reduction. So with dibol, we actually just sit around like this um, and nothing else will happen until you come in with water. As soon as you come in with water, that nitrogen picks up the proton, and then we're at an imine. We can just hydrolyze it, so it'll very quickly hydrolyze to the to the aldehyde. Okay, so that's why dibol um, does that. It doesn't want to make a dianion by adding another hydride. Now, lithium aluminum hydride, the bazooka, right, um, is able to do that second reduction um, of this type of intermediate. Again, it comes down to the lithium counterions that that allows you to do that. So. Um, lithium aluminum hydride will add that second equivalent and so you can get to this you know whatever the metals are going to be that that second reduction product and that's why lithium aluminum hydride goes to the amine um, but if we're we're just talking right now about forming the carbonyls and dibol reduction of nitriles lets you do that okay okay and let me let me just follow up on that. So that's the synthesis of aldehydes. And it turns out that if we take a nitrile and we add a alkyl greenyard to it, right? So instead of a hydride, we add a, an organometallic, we will get to an intermediate that's very similar. Okay, so I'll just say metal. Um, and it'll look like this. Right? So instead of hydride, we've just added our um, carbanion species. Um, but again, this is going to be resistant to add a second one. So it's just going to sit here at this point. And then when we work this up with um, acidic water, then we get to the ketone. Okay, so, so that's a very useful thing now. We can, we can put in nitriles, and now we can convert them either to aldehydes or ketones. So it's a very versatile uh, functionality. Um, and then the final one I just want to remind you of is that if you um, access a Weinrebamid, remember we talked about this functional group, um, you can also treat this with organometallics, like uh, organolithiums. And then uh, for the reasons we talked about before, this won't add a second time, and we can then get to um, ketones as well from this point. Okay. So a lot of that's review. Um, but uh, a, a little bit, a little bit of new new stuff, ozonolysis maybe, and uh, the reduction of nitriles. So oxidation, ozonolysis, reduction. That's pretty much how we're going to make carbonyls. So now we know all the reactions that aldehydes and ketones undergo. We also know how to make them. So we've we've sort of connected the dots there in how to use these functionality.